your clock is wrong. Okay. Mother made all holy, throned upon thy knee. Evermore the almighty child and Lord we see. While with awe thou gazest on the wondrous face, blessed among all women, Mary full of grace. We bow in homage and adoration to thee, our heavenly mother, queen of the heavens, star of the sea, guardian of humanity. We greet thee and thine angel hosts, shedding beauty and blessing among men and in nature. May we serve thee in our fellow men. O Holy Lady, Mother of the world, Queen of love and compassion, with all our hearts, we pour out our love and devotion at thy feet, and we offer ourselves as channels of thy wondrous tenderness, as agents of thine ever-ready help. We pray thee to use us in thy holy work, that we may grow like thee, our glorious Mother. O Holy Mother, Queen of our hearts, we dedicate our lives to thy service, Ave Maria. Angels and archangels, now around the maid, where the world's creator on her knees is laid, where she worships o'er him, God and man in one, son of highest heaven, Mary's royal son. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. May the Lord purify me, that I may worthily perform his service. In the strength of the Lord do I repel all evil from this, his holy altar and sanctuary, and from this house wherein we worship him. And I pray our Heavenly Father that he will send his holy angel to build for us a spiritual temple through which his strength and blessing may be poured forth upon his people through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, let us now lay the foundation of our temple. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. We are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for inhabitation of God through the Spirit. Except the Lord built the house, their labor is but lost that build it. The foundation of God stand sure, having this seal. Let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Christ is our foundation and our chief cornerstone. O Lord, thou hast created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of thine own eternity. Yet often we forget the glory of our heritage and wander from the path which leads to righteousness. But thou, O Lord, hast made us for thyself and our hearts are ever restless till they find their rest in thee. Look with the eyes of thy love upon our manifold imperfections and pardon all our shortcomings, that we may be filled with the brightness of the everlasting light and become the unspotted mirror of thy power and the image of thy goodness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, bless, preserve, and sanctify you. The Lord in his loving kindness look down upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord absolve you from all your sins and grant you the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. With praise and with prayer shall our temple be built. To God alone be the glory. Mayest thou be blessed by him in whose honor thou shalt be burned.
and with thy spirit. Blessed be the whole Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the undivided unity, eternal, immortal, invisible, to whom be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of good will. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy grace. Sustaineth all creation. 
beauty shineth through the whole universe. Unveil thy glory for thy only art holy. Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost art most high in the glory of God. O The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, with all our hearts we praise thee for the great glory of thy most holy archangel Michael and all thy holy angels. We thank thee for their wonderful wisdom their supreme strength, their radiant beauty, and as their resistless power is used always and utterly in thy service, so may we, following zealously their resplendent example, devote ourselves wholly to the helping of our brethren. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank Thee, O Lord, and praise Thee for the encouragement which Thou hast given us by the example of Thy holy saint, Francis. And we pray for wisdom and for strength from Thy most holy spirit to serve Thee even as he did serve. Thou who with the Father livest and reignest in glory in the unity of the same Holy Spirit, one God throughout all ages of ages. Amen. Almighty God and loving Father, of whose only gift it cometh that thy faithful people do unto thee true and laudable service, grant, we pray thee, that we may so truly serve thee in this life that we may be numbered among the loyal and trusty soldiers in all lives to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who art the strength of them who put their trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, we commend to thy fatherly goodness those who are afflicted with this pandemic in our midst, and we pray thee to strengthen and bless those who minister to them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> we praise thee, O Lord, for the example and assistance given to us by the holy martyr St. Alban, the patron of our church throughout the world. And we pray thee that under his protection, thy church may continually serve thee in all good works. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord Christ, 
who for her wondrous humility and purity hast exalted the Holy Lady Mary among the hosts of heaven, grant that we, thy people, may so follow that her most noble example, that we may, at the latter end, be found worthy to serve thee, even as do thy holy angels, thou who livest and reignest in glory forevermore. Amen. Teach us, O Lord, to see thy life in all men and in all the peoples of thine earth, and so guide the nations into the understanding of thy laws, that peace and goodwill may reign upon earth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The portion of scripture appointed for the epistle is taken from the 7th and 8th chapters of the Revelation of St. John the Divine. I saw the seven angels who stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was brought before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God and out of the angel's hand. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might, be unto our God for ever and ever. Amen. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. The gradual is that for the festival of St. Michael and all angels. O ye angels of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. To him all angels sing aloud the heavens and all the powers therein. To him cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Oh, praise the Lord, ye angels of his, that ye excel in strength. He that fulfill his commandment, and hearken unto the voice of his words. O oh, praise the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye servants of his that do his pleasure. Mayest thou be blessed by him, in whose honor thou shalt be burned.
Cleanse my heart and my lips, O God, who by the hand of thy seraph didst cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal from thine altar, and in thy loving kindness so purify me that I may worthily proclaim thy holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that through my heart the love of God may shine forth, and through my lips his power be made manifest. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is taken from the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them, and said, Amen, I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven Their angels do always behold the face of my Father, who is in heaven. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Well, good morning, friends, and thank you for joining us virtually today. Uh, And uh, today, uh, our homily is going to be delivered by Father, in my case, two senses, my father, Father, uh, Robert Elwood. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today is a busy Sunday. It is the celebration of St. Michael and All Angels in church, though that day was actually uh, September 29th. It is Trinity 17, uh, for which the intent is spiritual progress. And it is also the feast of of the beloved St. Francis of Assisi. All of these fit together 
but our emphasis is going to be on the angels today because that's the key to our celebration. Now, what are we talking about when we talk about angels? Not necessarily the conventional human-looking figures with wings, or even St. Michael with a sword fighting a war in heaven against Satan, but something even bigger and better. To talk about angels is a way of saying that heavens and earth are alive with the glory of God. And where God is, there is life, freedom, consciousness, love, and in the intent of today, highways wide open for spiritual progress. Now, there are those who say that in our scientific age, nothing can explain the universe except materialism and material forces. There's nothing out there but matter, working by the kind of laws that science discovers and interprets, and maybe a few limited minds here and there that have evolved into some sort of consciousness, very limited consciousness, actually, in our, as in our own case. But look at the problems to this kind of materialism. First, materialism does not really explain anything. It just does what science does, and what science does very well, tell us what is out there, but not how or why. I'm a passionate devotee of science, especially astronomy and physics and paleontology. But something more than science like this is called for. It's like if you were at a banquet and all you got was the first course. It's like materialism just gives us a salad, but the next dishes to be brought out are beautiful, maybe decorated with endless images of stars and so on, but are flat and empty. They picture a gorgeous universe, but its stars are one-dimensional and without nourishment for mind or body. For all of the stunning beauty of the nebulae and galaxies and mysterious planets, we sense something hollow. If there is no mind be in it or no mind equal to all of its splendor. <coughs> C.S. Lewis, in his Narnia story, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, has a uh, skeptic from our world in that alternative world of Narnia, full of wonders and magic, and in this world he meets the star, the spirit of a star, come down to Earth. But his response is that uh, in our world, a star is nothing but hot gas, but a big ball of hot gas. But the spirit of the star says, even in your world, that may be what a star is made of, but is not what a star is. In theosophy, and no less in the liberal Catholic tradition, our sun may be made of hot gas, or rather I think today we would probably say some atomic particles in fusion. But what it is, is much more than that. It is what is called the solar logos, the center of consciousness, joy, and power, which governs our entire solar system and is full of the unimaginable joy of a very highly evolved being. And if it's so in the case of our own star, Surely it is also the case in all of the other stars who greatly exceed in numbers of seven billion or so humans on this particular planet. It is now said there are perhaps 200 billion galaxies with maybe 100 billion stars in each, an unimaginable number. So to look up and to see the stars or even to think about the stars is something truly awesome though we were surrounded by such a rich universe of joy and creativity, a universe which immensely dwarfs our own of, uh, <clears throat> with all of its sorrows and suffering 
but shows there is so much more out there, so much more all around us in our universe than what we experience here below. And which shows where life in our universe ultimately is going. In time, each of us undoubtedly will be able to leave our backward planet's toil and trouble to become a star, even the spirit and mind of a galaxy of billions of stars, and even more for all that we know. And here's where the angels come in. But first, how do we do it? How do we evolve to the level of the solar logos and the stars? Actually, it's very easy. So often the problem in our spiritual lives is not that they are too hard, but rather it's easier than we expect it to be, or maybe even want it to be. Because there are those who think that a spiritual life to be worthwhile has got to be very hard and difficult, but actually it is simply doing what comes naturally if we are true to our own ultimate nature. And in that sense, very easy. Thomas Merton once said that to be a saint is just to be myself. But not myself, of course, if I've, as I may have perverted myself through my life, but myself as God made me to be. That's all we have to do. All we do to get on the path to live in the living universe, then, is uh, to do as much as we can now to live in freedom and full consciousness in love, in creativity, on our own level, and let that level get bigger and bigger and bigger until it's on the level of the solar logos and the stars. Do we need help in this? That's where the angels come in. Where the consciousness of the universe is not just humans and stars, but in virtually all religious traditions. There is a spectrum going from the consciousness of the atom up step by step to the infinite God, infinite reality. But between us and the ultimate are angels, devas, avatars, bodhisattvas, immortals, whatever you call them. And they are there, held there to help us by word and deed. Uh, a few, couple of days ago, October 2nd, was the traditional feast of the holy guardian angels. Tradition says that we have guardians who are willing and able to help us, and we can listen to them day after day. All angels are said to be messengers, envoys of God, guides on the inner trail that with many windings leads to glory. A turn to, attune to them, to the angels, the ears of your heart. And now to God the Father and God the Son. He ascribes us most justly to the might, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth and forevermore. Let us now continue our worship with the act of faith. Perfect justice rules the world, that all his sons shall one day reach his feet, however far they stray. We hold the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man. We know that we do serve him best, when best we serve our brother man. So shall his blessing rest on us, and peace forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. 
Your offerings will now be received. If you wish to make a contribution to our parish, please click the donate link just beneath the video. We adore thee, O God, who art the source of all life and goodness, and with true and thankful hearts we offer unto thee this token of thine own life-giving gifts bestowed upon us, thou who art the giver of all. According to immemorial custom, we now mix water with this wine, praying thee, O Lord, that we may evermore abide in Christ and he in us. We offer unto thee, O Lord, this chalice with joy and gladness. May the worship which we offer ascend before thy divine majesty as a sacrifice, pure and acceptable in thy sight, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. thou be blessed by him in whose honor thou shalt be burned. As this incense rises before thee, O Lord, so let our prayer be set forth in thy sight. Let thy holy angels encompass thy people and breathe forth upon them the spirit of thy blessing. May the Lord enkindle within us the fire of his love and the flame of everlasting charity.
Brethren, we have built a temple for the distribution of Christ's power. Let us now prepare a channel for its reception, and to that end pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice at thy hands and sanctify our lives in his service. We lay before thee, O Lord, these thy creatures of bread and wine, linking them spiritually with ourselves and praying thee to receive through them our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For here we offer and present unto thee ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a holy and continual sacrifice unto thee. May our strength be spent in thy service, and our love poured forth upon thy people, thou who livest for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give and thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto the O Lord. Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. For Thou, who art the King of angels, Lord of all the hosts of heaven, hast granted us the aid of these Thy radiant servants. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with thrones, dominations, princedoms, virtues, powers, with cherubim and seraphim, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying Lord God of hosts heaven and earth are full our oblations have served as tokens and channels of our love and devotion towards thee. But now we break the link with us and with all lower things, and we pray thee to purify and to hallow them as earthly channels of thy wondrous power. We desire to offer this holy sacrifice, especially for thy holy Catholic Church, for the President of the United States and all that are put in authority under him, William, our presiding Archbishop, for all our bishops, clergy, and faithful, for those here present, and for all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, 
need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially And for those who are again about to enter this earthly life through the portal of birth, and likewise for their mothers to be, especially. Likewise, do we offer it for all those thy children who have been delivered from the burden of the flesh, especially for. that, freed from earthly toil and care, they may enjoy the felicity of thy presence, evermore praising thee in word and deed, O God, everlasting, living, and true. Wherefore, O Holy Lord, Father Almighty, we pray thee to look down on and accept as a channel these offerings, and with thy Holy Spirit and word do bless approve and ratify them that they may become for us the most precious body and blood of thy Son, who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands and with his eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed, break, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, and eat ye all of this, for this is my body. In like manner, after he had supped, taking also this noble chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink ye all of this, for this is my blood. As oft as ye shall do these things, ye shall do them in remembrance of me.
Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, bearing in mind the ineffable sacrifice of thy Son, do offer unto thee this, the most precious gift which thou hast bestowed upon us, in token of our love and of the perfect devotion and sacrifice of our minds and hearts to thee. And we pray that thou wouldst command thy holy angel to bear our oblation to thine altar on high, there to be offered by him who, as the eternal high priest, forever offers himself as the eternal sacrifice. <clears throat> and we do pray for thy servant who ministers at this altar, that meetly celebrating the mysteries of the most holy body, and blood of thy Son, he may be filled with thy mighty power and blessing. Likewise, we pray thee to sanctify thy people here present with these thy heavenly gifts, and through these mysteries do thou hallow, quicken, and bless them, that both in their hearts and in their lives they may show forth thy praise and glorify thy holy name. All these things do we ask, O Father, in the name and through the mediation of thy most blessed Son. For we acknowledge and confess with our hearts and lips that by him were all things made, yea, all things, both in heaven and earth, with him. As the indwelling life do all things exist, and in him, as the transcendent glory, all things live and move and have their being. To whom with thee, O mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be ascribed all honor and glory throughout the ages of ages. Amen. Instructed by the words of sacred scripture and following the tradition of Holy Church from of old, we now say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here do we give unto thee, O Lord, most high praise and heartfelt thanks for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in the Holy Lady Mary, our Heavenly Mother, and in all thy glorious saints from the beginning of the world, who have been the choice vessels of thy grace and a shining light unto many generations. And we join with them in worship before thy great white throne, whence flow all love and light and blessing through all the worlds which thou hast made. O Son of God, who showest thyself this day upon a thousand altars, and yet art one and indivisible, in token of thy great sacrifice, we break this, thy body. Praying that by this action, ordained from of old, thy strength, thy peace, thy blessing, which thou dost give us in this holy sacrament may be spread abroad upon thy world. And thou, O Lord Christ, wast made known to thy disciples in the breaking of bread. So may thy many children know themselves to be one in thee, even as thou art one with the Father. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with thy spirit. O thou who in this adorable sacrament hast left us a living memorial and pledge of thy marvelous love for mankind, and thus therein graciously draw us into wondrous and mystic communion with thee, Grant us so to receive the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that our souls may be lifted into the immensity of thy love, and that, being filled with a high endeavor, we may ever be mindful of thine indwelling presence and breathe forth the fragrance of a holy life. Amen. Ye that desire to partake in the body of the Lord, draw nigh and receive this most holy sacrament.
the body of our Lord Christ, keep thee unto life eternal. The body of our Lord Christ, keep thee unto life eternal. The body of our Lord Christ, keep thee unto life eternal. Under the veil of earthly things, now have we communion with our Lord, Jesus Christ. Soon with open face shall we behold him, and rejoicing in his glory be made like unto him. Then shall his true disciples be brought by him with exceeding joy before the presence of his Father's glory. and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. 
We who have been refreshed with thy heavenly gifts do pray thee, O Lord, that thy grace may be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that it may continually be made manifest in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Ite me siest. Deo gratias. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. May the holy ones whose pupils you aspire to become show you the light you seek, give you the strong aid of their compassion and their wisdom. There is a peace that passeth understanding. It abides in the hearts of those who live in the eternal. There is a power that maketh all things new. It lives and moves in those who know the self as one. May that peace brood over you, that power uplift you till you stand where the one initiator is invoked, till you see his star shine forth. Oh.